Hey, good afternoon. Jim Freeman along at first at four. If you still have not applied for FEMA assistance, the registration for aid closes two weeks from today. September 28th is the final day to apply for aid from FEMA. We're here for the long run. We're not here until uh, just two weeks from now and all of a sudden we're going to pull up and leave the day that registration ends. And we've got all these uh, all these cases to follow through on. It's a very complex, involved recovery. It's going to go on for uh, for many months. If you have registered for FEMA assistance already and are still waiting for a response or need extra information, you can call FEMA. Here's the number 800-621-3362. Well, weather-wise, things looking very nice yet again out in the mountains this afternoon. Even fewer clouds than we saw yesterday. Combine that with plenty of sunshine, and we're A-OK -okay out there this afternoon. A look from around the region over at London Corbin Airport, then Hazard and Pineville Medical Center camera all into the low to mid-70s at this hour. Those dew points are in the middle and upper 50s, so it is more than comfortable around the region right now. And all those winds tick down to calm at this hour. Middle 70s out there for the vast majority of us. A little cooler as usual in uh, some of our southwest Virginia counties. 71 Clintwood, 68 in Wise. So still seeing some cooler air out there. And the dew points region-wide. Upper 50s to near 60s, so you may walk outside and feel a little bit of it but it will not be impacting the weather too much. Few of those fair weather clouds kind of moving on through on satellite and radar. That is just about it as we head through the evening hours. So as we run through the remainder of the evening, things looking good. It's still in the upper 70s as of the next hour, mid 60s out there by this evening and overnight falling quickly into the 50s. Details though on when we could see those temperatures start to warm back up. That's coming up in just a few minutes, Jim. Hi, Devin. Thank you. Love those boring weather forecasts. The Biden administration is stepping in to help with contract talks between railroads and unions. There's a push to find an agreement before the railway workers go on strike, possibly as early as Friday. CBS's Skylar Henry has more details from Capitol Hill. Mr. President, can you come talk to us about the railroad negotiations? No. President Biden may not have wanted to talk about it, but he says his administration is working to avert a strike that would shut down the nation's railroads. Negotiators are working to reach a new deal by Friday. We have made crystal clear uh, to the interested parties the harm that American families, businesses and farmers and communities would experience if they were not to reach uh, a resolution. Labor Secretary Martin Walsh is meeting with railroad executives and union leaders in D.C. this morning. The two sides are still at odds over sick time and attendance policies. 30% of all U.S. freight shipments could be impacted if there is a strike, putting further strain on the overwhelmed supply chain at a time when Americans are already dealing with inflation. There's just no question that it would be extremely devastating and its impacts would compound very rapidly over a couple of days. A federal law on the books actually allows Congress to step in and prevent railway workers from striking but Democratic leaders say they aren't going to go down that road. Let me tell you, first and foremost, I don't believe that's a good idea. I believe that the unions, as well as the railroads, uh, should step up to the plate and get this done quickly. Senator Jerry Moran, who said he's worried about farmers being able to ship their crops, says Congress should act. I will utilize my opportunities as a member of the Senate, as a member of Congress, for congressional intervention, intervention and work to shield the impact of a rail shutdown across the nation. The Biden administration says it's working on contingency plans, including adding more truckers to the struggling trucking industry to keep goods moving. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Amtrak has started preemptively canceling long haul service on affected tracks and some community rail lines are warning customers to find alternate transportation plans beginning Friday. A railway strike could also lead to higher gas prices for everyone because trains carry so much oil from refineries to their parts to other parts of the country. Queen Elizabeth's coffin arrived in Westminster Hall following a historic procession from Buckingham Palace earlier today. The late monarch will lie in state until her funeral on Monday with more than a million people expected to pay their respects. The Queen left Buckingham Palace for the last time. Britain's new king led the solemn journey behind the horse-drawn gun carriage with his siblings and sons, Princes William and Harry, the royal family's grief on public display. The queen's funeral will take place at Westminster Abbey, where she married the love of her life, the late Prince Philip, 
It's also the place where she was crowned queen. This is the end of a remarkable era, and it's farewell to a remarkable lady. As many as a million people are expected to wait in miles-long lines to see, say their farewell to the queen. McDonald's will shut its restaurants in United Kingdom areas on Funeral Day next week. McDonald's UK's Twitter account tweeted, all of our UK restaurants will be closed on Monday until 5 p.m. to allow everyone at McDonald's to pay their respects to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Coming up on First at Four, abortion just became an even hotter flashpoint ahead of the midterms. We'll explain. Plus, excellent weather continues through this evening and much of the week. The latest on how nice it looks coming up after this. Yeah.